Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of the live viewers. And Gemma sorts out something of a technical difficulty. Um, and hello to the replay viewers and welcome on into the mental health hour. We're going to take Gemma off for a minute while she gets her situation handled. Um, tonight, uh, we will be covering the topic of toxic friendships. So, should be a really good episode. Um, it's, hi Hannah, welcome on in. Uh, and hello also to Knowledge a couple days ago, Car Hunger, and TJ. Uh, so we try and do, uh, we, we try and pick topics or, uh, take topics from the audience, uh, Gemma. as, there's Gemma. Hi, Gemma. You had to put me on as I stuck my tongue out. Hi. <laughs> well, we got to get you on the. Oh, you have a side of the screen. Yeah. Yes. Welcome in. How, how are you today? That's, that's a question for you. Huh? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, all the technical difficulties right at the start. Um, I'm fine, other than like technical difficulties. So as I was as I was saying, um, we try to pick topics each week, uh, whether they be viewer requested or our own topics that really fit into everybody's uh, life in some way, shape, or form. I feel like we all deal with toxic friendships um, and it's not a it's not a topic that's really just for a few select people this can really reach a lot of folks um, Gemma we'll start with you as always tell us about toxic friendships oh like this seems very appropriate actually but um yeah like it's for a lot of people seem to think that um, they can basically like use people for what they can get and to have a friendship, a good friendship, you've got to give and take and not just take. And there's a lot of people out there that will do things only to receive and um like they, they think that they are entitled to like just I don't know just keep receiving things they don't like it's not a two-way split thing I'm trying to say like I've just had a big brain fart because of all the technical difficulties so don't mind me <laughs> we're getting back on track I've just got error messages popping up so oh uh, the good old pre-live failed you tonight Oh, it did. That's all right. Um, yeah, I mean, toxic friendships, as uh, we get into this a little bit further, as everybody will probably realize that they've been involved in a relationship like this uh, somewhere in their life um, and could be actively in a relationship right now. Um, so uh, I think first and foremost we'll kind of just break down what a toxic friendship looks like what it is um i know that you have found some slides but first i wanted to throw this graphic up um, a little quote people around you inspire you or drain you pick them wisely and i really liked that uh, because it makes a lot of sense. Um, mm. Our relationships with friends, family, uh, work, uh, co-workers, um, and the like all have a draining effect on us or a inspiring effect on us. Um, usually friendship isn't just some stagnant thing that, hey, you and I are friends and then we never speak again. Um, we're usually there's a lot of back and forth with a good friendship, um, always talking, always uh, 
either texting or, or zooming or whatever, uh, talking on the, the phone, yeah. uh, you know, so there's, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, it's not a stagnant thing. There, there's just, a, there's a lot of back and forth between the two people. And a good and, friendship, like no matter how far apart, there's like it that the, the distance is no object for a good friendship. That's true. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've learned that more than uh, uh, anything here on Hats. You know, um, it's just a very international platform, and gladly so. Um, however, with the back with the constant back and forth and um <clears throat> chatter between friends or co-workers or employees uh you know that that will either drain you or inspire you um so mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to pick out one way or the other if you're in a if you're in a bad situation for your own mental health or for um, the mental health of others, um, because mm -hmm. certainly, as we learned in the gaslighting episode, we can we can certainly take a look in the mirror and uh, and see if any of these qualities fall on us. Uh, but if you would be so kind, Miss Gemma, to mm -hmm. walk us through some of the signs and uh, things we should be looking for for yeah. a toxic friendship, that would be awesome. Sure. All right. Okay. So we start with the, um, there's like, there's a few different signs. They may actually um, cross over with each other. Let's press the right buttons. Dear me. I shouldn't be allowed buttons. All right. So shut the cameras off because I'm getting close. All right. So this one is the um, 10 signs of a um, unhealthy friendship. I couldn't read the thing. Um, so the relationship is competitive. So there's a lot of that, like I've seen, um, where it's like it's like a competition to see who can do, like the best with like everything. Everything's like it's a competition. They've got to they've got to win at something. They like, you know, I've got the best this. I've got the best that. I've done this. I've got that. Um you're on your worst behavior with your friend i mean like there's nothing like a bit of um like like friendly banter and stuff but it's when it becomes toxic um to the point where it is like unhealthy or like potentially something that can get you into trouble um either with the law or with other people um, you feel emotionally drained after connecting with the friend. Um, your friend tries to embarrass you in front of others. So like embarrassing, belittling, um, saying things just to make you feel generally bad. That right there is all of the draining aspects of this toxic mm -hmm. friendship. You know, it's just the constant negativity yeah. is always going to be a draining force in your life mm -hmm. and this can also like be re like in relation to friendships or relationships or like it just in general like it would yeah. fit in with like Kinda anybody in your life the same um, thing with our with our nar narcissistic episode um and yeah, the gaslighting all, episode mm, they, they kind of all go that. hand in hand yeah you don't have anything in common. I mean, like, obviously everybody's got, like, things that they enjoy doing, but generally a good friendship will have a few things in common at least. I am, like, not, it's not going to be everything. You could have different music tastes, different film likes, but generally there is something in common with them. Um, your friend shares details of your personal life with others, like, um I've just had this recently where things that you say perhaps say to someone in confidence and then they go and like disclose that to other people without your consent. Um the friendship is not reciprocal, so they'd like um no give and take. Like, yeah, yeah, like 
it's just take, take, take. And they continue to expect more from you. You're always having to make the first move to get in touch with them. And like, so the reciprocity out with them. should like, uh, be a two way street. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it should definitely, well, any relationship in your life, not just friendships, but mm -hmm. they should be a two-way street. Um, you should mm -hmm. give some and take some and, and et cetera. Um, it, it should not, sometimes in the toxic friendships, you'll see that it's all about one particular friend. Let's say you have a group of friends. Let's just, so far yeah. I've been, I've been feeling like you're having a hell of a time with the buttons yeah. tonight. Um, Sorry. <laughs> uh, sometimes, or a lot of times, uh, you're derailing me too. Uh, a lot of times you'll see, or we'd be thinking about friendships being just one, one on one friendships, but you, you can have a group of friends, let's say four or five folks that you are, uh, you know, a good tight click with, um, say at work, uh, just for example, um, these these clicks and what have you already get their own uh you know bad uh bad chatter because nobody likes clicks all this stuff but inside the click uh now you have five people and say one of them just is this narcissist type person that we've discussed it can yeah. really create a toxic environment for the other four folks um so I just wanted to throw that out there as well, that it's not just a one-on-one -on -one situation all the time. Sometimes you have a group of friends mm -hmm. um, that this could fall under. Yeah. All right, where were we? So you want me you're... to hit the buttons? <laughs> yeah, it's probably the best. You're unable to have healthy disagreements. So like with any relationship, as in we're all, you're going to have some kind of... Um, disagreement but like there's a difference between having a healthy debate and a full-blown argument where you just can't like and then to have that and then to be made to feel like you and your thoughts are invalid and that they are wrong and you're made to feel like you're wrong for having those opinions that's like everybody is allowed their opinion and you know your friend doesn't respect your boundaries um so again just like knowing the your friend's limits and r respecting that um the relationship is um i can't read this oh codependent yeah i'm having a hard time reading it's so small <laughs> sorry um so like again where are we you just are you touching the buttons now <laughs> i am i've got us back to square one here oh, so, <laughs> codependency uh is something that we'll touch on probably in its own episode uh yeah. there's a lot there's a lot that goes into codependent relationships mm -hmm. um but yes, they can, they can certainly make things toxic as well. It's good to mention uh, into uh, this episode. However, um, <laughs> it, Gemma's hair does look lovely, doesn't it? Oh, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, it's hard to mention, or I mean, it's hard to get too deep into codependency right now because, like I said, we're going to do probably an entire episode on that. Um, mm -hmm. But if you'd like to take us into another slide, uh, the buttons are all yours again. I just wanted to get us on a back to yeah. square one. Yeah, like let's just... as you've as you've hit every button there is, I think. Oh, pretty much. <laughs> um, signs of a toxic relationship again. So they always compare you like to to them to other people. Um, I've had quite a lot of that. Um, putting you down every time so it can be things like saying that you're no good at things like just it, li literally anything nitpicking about anything gossiping about you don't respect the boundaries that you have 
um, that was on the other one. They leave you unsettled, um, try to change you. Now that's quite a big thing. Um, and I've had that before, like trying to change you into like, especially like if they see that you're confident and this can come with the gaslighting and the narcissism, um, where they want to change you into something else. So like nitpicking and things so that they make you feel like you're I guess worthless to the point where they they tell you what to what to wear for example uh how to behave and you become like a shell of your former self they make you feel lonely and I I literally was discussing this the other day actually and say there's nothing lonelier then people think that being lonely is being on your own but often there's nothing more lonely than being with people that are just wrong for you and it's um totally being with people that are not right for you that will con continually put you down and make you feel worthless now that that is like that's lonely I'm always competing with you and very self-centered. I'm going to like take that one off. I think there was one more. Um, with this one, I don't know how easy it's going to be to read it. I'm going to, oh God, I'm going to, you can't zoom in, can you? No, um, but we can, we can come back to this because I want to, if you want to pull it up on your phone, it'll be easier. But real quick, I wanted to touch on a few things there. The, the loneliness and the, the selfishness, um, especially the selfishness. The, these are, the, this is one of the biggest um, uh, signs of a toxic relationship in general. Um, how it falls right in line with the gaslighting episode we just did and the narcissist episode we just did is crazy. Um, it's it's nice to see these episodes lining up so perfectly. Um, if we go back here, they always compare you. Um, the gossip, that's what I wanted to touch on. Uh, gossip is something that we cannot get through life without. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've come to terms with that in my own world, um, where I am in the fire department especially. Um, and, and what I say all the time uh, to people that come and, and talk with not just me, but, you know, amongst our shift or whatever, they're like, God, I just don't like gossip. I just don't understand why people need to do this and, um, you know, uh, et cetera, on, on things like, uh, pertaining to gossip. Uh, and I say that I haven't worked in a single job. And I've had several before I, you know, became a career firefighter. I worked in grocery stores. I worked in um, malls and stocking shelves and all kinds of stuff. School. Um, everywhere you go, there's gossip. Everywhere you go, there's drama. Um, oh, yeah. Look at HAPS. I mean, yeah. even on the HAPS platform, you, there's gossip. There's drama. Um everywhere you go you're gonna run into gossip and drama and there's just no getting out of it there's no safe place from it so just keep that in mind i mean you know as we move forward you, if anybody out there has found one place on this planet where you are safe from gossip or drama please put it in the comment section and let us know where it is because i certainly haven't found it but yeah. that being said, while gossip and drama is a normal part of our day-to-day -day lives on this planet, too much of it, like anything else, can be toxic. Um, everything mm -hmm. in moderation. Um, you know, if you're constantly getting the same gossip and drama and drama and gossip from the same friends, maybe it is time to take a step back from that friendship. Um you know your you know your limits. Um, if 
if you enjoy a little bit of back and forth, enjoy a little gossip, enjoy a little what's going on in the world of whatever today, then uh, that friendship won't be affected at all. Uh, you guys will have a good back and forth. You know when to stop, when to cut it out and move forward. Uh, and usually one friend or the other can be the one to say, hey, uh, I think we've beaten this horse dead. Um, I don't think anything's really going to change right now. Let's uh, let's move on to something else. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, thank you, Lindsay. Yes, this is our breast cancer uh, awareness shirt for the month of October. We get to wear um, design shirts every year in the fire service. Um, usually the different counties try and uh, make the best shirt design, what have you. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, gossip and drama are, are a normal part of everyday life and there's no getting around it. But um, as, as long as it's moderated, it, you, you know, um, it, it, the one friend doesn't feel like it's too far or too much or the only thing that you guys are friends for is to just talk about, talk shit about somebody else. I mean, that's where it, that's where it really gets toxic is when these people that love the gossip and drama start constantly mm -hmm. talking shit on people. So uh, we try to we, we got to try and stay away from that stuff. There's no there's no real reason for anybody to uh, be talking poorly about other people behind their backs all the time, you know. No, but, some people thrive on it, though, like they can't they can't seem to get through a day without like just being horrible and spiteful and it seems that by putting other people down they it makes them feel good and they that, that's just a horrible place and person to be what that they're... has to fall under the last one here don't respect your boundaries you have to mm -hmm. uh, there, there comes mm -hmm. that there comes that point in any friendship or relationship mm -hmm. that you set your boundaries up you have to you have to establish boundaries for that other person to realize um, what they can and can't talk about, get away with this, that, and the other. Um, it, and everybody's boundaries are going to be different. Um, did you get that other one pulled up on your phone so you can actually see it? Yeah, it's locked okay. again. It's just bear with me. Oh. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. We'll go, mm -hmm. go through this. Um, All right. And if there's any if there's so, any questions as well, please throw them into yeah. the comments. Yeah, so it's a bit small to read, unfortunately, hey, but it's got um, it's got two types of um, two friends. So the purple one is Allison, and the red one is so uh, Sophia. Okay, so and we'll read the purple one first. So is happy for you when things are going well. So this is like. We're, we're describing two types of friends and the idea is you in the comments maybe say either the purple or the red which one's like the best of like the better person i guess the better friend so going for the purple one so is happy for you when things go well encourages and points out great things about you understands when you're busy or need me time calls because she misses you respects you and your opinions trusts you honors her commitments and values your time accepts you as you are embraces your other friends keeps your confidences and stands up for you is interested in how you are wants to listen empathize and help with problems is generous with you is open, honest, and vulnerable with you, is tolerant and forgiving, and invests in your friendship. And then the bottom part, it says, you feel valued, happy, better about yourself, and at ease to be authentic and vulnerable. You look forward to seeing her and create opportunities to catch up. Then the red sides, fear, is jealous when things are going well for you, judges and criticizes you, often disguised as helpful honesty, calls you only when she needs something or needs to see you all the time, 
so like they can't they can't manage without you they're very needy dismisses your opinions and always needs to be right doubts and discredits you cancels and reschedules often tries to change you doesn't like or respect your other friends shares private information about you with other with others and spread rumors lacks empathy and makes everything about her takes more than gives lies to you and doesn't share openly starts petty arguments compares your relationship to her other friends and accuses you of not being as good a friend and then the bottom says you feel stressed emotionally exhausted and bad about yourself you dread seeing her and feel relieved when she leaves so they're two very different types of friendships and like i'm pretty sure that you would all know that there's like a big difference between the two and which one would be the healthy and the toxic friendship yes um just a couple of things i <laughs> yes you did <laughs> i saw that. Uh, just a couple of things that i wrote down there uh from the second side um here's how it all ties in uh with um the gaslighting and the and the narcissistic personality disorder that we've done dismissive uh, uh your toxic friends can be dismissive cancels uh all the time mm -hmm. doesn't like your other friends um and then you said several bullet points that all fit under selfish um, mm -hmm. and their comparative of themselves uh to your other friends or their comparative of your friendship to friendships you share with others um, they want to be the best they want to be number one um, these are very narcissistic traits um, and the, they'll gaslight you into uh, thinking that they're the best um, and that your other friends shouldn't matter or not that they shouldn't matter but not matter as much as that they are number one um, and then the canceling out of plans and stuff, or the flakiness as it's often referred to as, that can also be a detrimental part of uh, friendships. Mm. Because when it happens all, all the time, I mean, once or twice, you know, if you, if, if you have to cancel on something, that's understandable. You know, life happens, mm. things come up, um, mm. and, and, you know, we move on. Uh, but if it's every single time that you're having to cancel on whether it be plans or um, even just a phone call, like you guys plan to talk, uh, th then you become this person that is, it's not a very trustworthy friend. Um, but at the same time, when you're doing things that aren't helping you to be considered a trustworthy friend and have a, 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 a confidant, uh, etc., then you're also still trying to be, you know, the number one. So you're, you're forcing yourself on to another person that you're also basically taking down with you. Does that make sense? Am I explaining that yeah. correctly? Yeah. Um, think about how many times in your own life um, and this goes out to the comment section, replay viewers. Think about how many times any of these traits, qualities have been involved in one of your friendships. Um, and also, as I mentioned in the gaslighting episode, take a second to see if you're the one that's putting this out there as your product. Um, mm. What do you think, Gemma? Yeah. Um certainly like 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 we said about even we learn about things like looking up some of the traits for toxic friendships and stuff i was thinking gosh i can relate to some of this because like certainly been happening a lot lately i'm i mean 
as you say, stuff happens, life happens and things, and yeah. it can be difficult at times, like if you've got other commitments, family, things like that. But when there starts to be a pattern where it's happening like constantly, and then you just start to think, you know, do they do they think of me the way I think of them? And you start questioning things, you start thinking like, because certainly like if you're constantly having to reach out to someone and they're not bothering to reply or anything, you think like, certainly I do. I think like, oh, am I bothering them? Like, you know, I'm trying to check things are all right and like no replies and stuff. And then you start thinking, well, am I bothering them? Do they actually want me to, you know, and it just it just makes you question everything and then you start doubting yourself like and that's in a way that can be very closely compared to the gaslighting in an indirect way i guess because of the way that by doing that the way they're making you feel certainly for me like that's been happening um and you become yeah like they say like you you become paranoid because you think well have i done something wrong is it me like have i said something and i'm terrible i overthink everything to the point where like i'll just I go completely with it and yeah you think well like should i just stop you know like you know and it, yeah. it can be pretty detrimental to your own health. Certainly. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. not just your mental health, but um, physical health and mm -hmm. uh, everything that follows. Because, yeah, uh, of course, they're all tied together. If you're not living a good mental health lifestyle, mm -hmm. then you're, it's going to show up in your physical health, emotional, and all of the ensuing. Uh, touching a little bit more on the dismissive side of things, uh, this is um, something that I tr I was pretty bad at myself, uh, and I didn't really realize that I was bad at it. Uh, being dismissive, to break it down for a minute, uh, of your friends. Sometimes you don't even mean to be dismissive, but you're kind of you, you you're being dismissive without realizing it. For example, uh, I all the time would have, if, if a friend would come up and talk, talk to me about something um, and uh, maybe ask my advice on something, uh, you know, I'm feeling like such and such, uh, you know, what do you think about this um, in particular? I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, like if somebody, let's say Gemma came up to me and said, hey, uh, you know, I'm feeling like people aren't listening to me and I'm disrespected and this, that, and the other. And my immediate response is, you're not disrespected um, and you're not, nobody thinks badly of you. Mm -hmm. Here I am trying to say something helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm trying to negate what you're thinking because I might not think it's true. Uh, but at the same time, what that's doing is dismissing her thought. Um, so when we look at the word, as I'm explaining it, um, you know, I've negated your original thought. And that means I've also dismissed it. So mm -hmm. even with the best of intentions of me mm -hmm. just trying to lead you down another path of thought uh, and away from thinking that you're disrespected, I'm disrespecting you and dismissing you. It's a very tricky thing uh, because mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not meaning to dismiss you, but I am, and you can certainly feel dismissed in that in that sense. Um, so I, I had to learn a lot about what, how I was putting that off and, uh, and what, to, what to say instead. So how, to go, how do I go about this to get my point across still 
uh, and and not be as dismissive. And a lot of times it has to do more with not coming at it in a non-negateful manner. Like looking at it maybe as, okay, so you're feeling dismissed or you're, I'm sorry, you're feeling disrespected mm -hmm. and that nobody listens to you. So how do we go about fixing this problem? You know what I'm saying? Does it, mm -hmm. does any of what I just said make sense to everybody? Cause I feel like yeah. I did a very piss poor job of explaining what was up here. Um, but please, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. I'd be happy to clarify. Uh, I think I got the point across. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. Um, have you had that happen, or do you notice these things that I'm that I'm talking about? Like, have you noticed, uh, not just for me, like, but anybody in your life? Do you feel dismissed ever when oh, you yeah. you bring up something? Yeah, often. Like, I think for me my family are the worst offenders for that one like um i didn't touch any buttons there he's had to uh, but yeah my, for me my family's there my family is like the worst for doing that hey jim um it's like everything that i have said like when i'm feeling like often because of my health sometimes i will feel like i'm a bad mother because i can't do certain things and like everything that i'm feeling is just dismissed and generally like they'll just be quite dismissive of everything but then yeah i've had it before even on even such as like this on on here and like we just had a conversation not five minutes before hit and go live but you're i find that you're not dismissive of that um and yeah. like certainly i found that it, like lately especially with all the stuff that's been going on you've kind of kept me on the uh, straight and narrow kind of thing um but yeah it's, i try yeah <laughs> uh welcome on in everybody uh sorry we have been missing some comments tonight there are uh there's a lot mm. going on with this topic I'm trying to in particular. Um, but welcome on into jim uh happy cat yeah that's true Alex. um uh, hmm. and intuitive die good to see you um and everybody you know that stopped in and, and said hello thanks for thanks for being here as always uh we love gem and i love doing this show it is mm -hmm. it was nothing it was absolutely nothing when she texted me earlier this week to say you want to do a, a special on sunday i was like absolutely let's do it mm -hmm. i mean it's just this show is a lot of fun um yes jim thank you i am feeling a lot better i'm i'm released from quarantine i'm back uh I'm back to work. I, I was at work yesterday uh, for 24 hours and everything. COVID is uh, is gone. I'm good to be out in the wild again. Today is all oh, about yeah. allergies. <laughs> Today is all about allergies. I cannot shake uh, the sneezing and, um, you know, rubbing my eyes. So I apologize if I'm touching my face a lot today. It's just <laughs> uh, I had to get up and go blow my nose. Uh, a couple seconds ago. Um, anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so dismissiveness, as a on the whole, is uh, a great uh, a great uh, sign of toxic mm. relationships. Dismissiveness can uh, present itself very mm -hmm. subtly. Um, but yeah. you certainly know, you certainly know on your insides whether or not you felt dismissed or not in a friendship mm -hmm. or in any relationship. So, I, like I say, every week we tr we try and keep things, you know, compact and not so broad. Um, that's why we've titled this one Toxic Friendships. Uh, mm -hmm. But But the information really does translate over to work relationships, over to... 
Oh yeah. Uh, you know, your boss or coworkers, uh, your uh, family members, um, mm -hmm. et cetera. Like Gemma, you just spoke on your family. Uh, yeah. And, and the information really does translate between, it, it translates nicely uh, between, yes, touching my face more today, definitely more on the whole. And uh, so uh, what else did, we, did I have? Oh, the, the canceling we talked about doesn't like the other friends. Um, yeah. Touch briefly on that. Um, you know, I did say that uh, you can have that one friend that wants to be the forefront, the, the best friend. Mm -hmm. um, and gets whatever. jealous when you go with the others and tries to make you feel guilty about it. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're in a group of friends or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, say, say there's a, a five or six people friendship group that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and that one person wants to be the alpha of of the friends or or what have you quite easy to pick that out um a lot of times we just i would just let this kind of thing slide um because mm -hmm. i mean you almost expect it in any group of friends there's going to be one person that wants to be alpha mm -hmm. uh, and i guess in a lot of <clears throat> in a lot of ways it, it the hierarchy does dictate that we need an alpha in most um, relationships, uh, especially the, the working relationship. You need to have that separation between boss and coworker. Um, that's why it's it's a very toxic situation. If your friend, if you're good friends with your boss, mm -hmm. and then the boss has to put the hammer down one day at work because stuff's not getting done. And he has to be the asshole. And uh, now, hey, man, I thought we were friends. Well, this is work and I need you to do your job. <laughs> I mean, you're just asking for a can of worms there. Um, mm -hmm. So certainly, yes, this does uh, translate. This information translates well across the board, as did the, the gaslighting stuff um, as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll throw this quote back up for, for those of you that are just joining us or come, came in uh, a little later. I threw this up in the beginning. Uh, just a nice quote that I liked uh, for this episode and, it, uh, uh, and the episodes we've done previously. People around you inspire you or drain you and pick them wisely. Um, mm -hmm. It's powerful thing to think about uh as i mentioned at the beginning of the show uh, any relationships we have in our life whether it be friendships uh family members co-workers uh, classmates these people that you are dealing with on the regular are constantly either increasing your energy and increasing the good vibes in your life or they're just draining you entirely and, and emotionally draining you physically, which in turn physically drains you. Because um, if you're not good up here, you're not gonna be good all over. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's quite, that reigns quite true. I see it all the time in myself. If, if up mm -hmm. here isn't, uh, isn't in a happy place or, you know, at a place where it's uh, operating um, clearly, then the rest of this does not operate clearly. Uh, lifting others up is such a joyful experience. Yes, and that's another uh, great way to look at it, Ella. Um, not only are you um, doing a, a good service to the community by doing something to lift others up, but it also helps you on the inside. It helps the, the mental health of your situation stay in a good place, which again, then translates through the rest of your body and how you act and how you are amongst other people. It, it fills your tank. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to put it. Um, and running back through for, for those uh, that have joined late, uh, some of the things we looked at, mm -hmm. um, did we lose some? Oh, no, um, this to, this is, I had to because it was a long one, so I couldn't. I gotcha. 
Mm-hmm. They always compare you. They put you down every time. They gossip about you. Mm-hmm. Um, we did talk about gossiping uh, a good bit. Um, you know, try to change you. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, obviously, you know, the selfishness of other people can definitely be shown in how self-centered they are. Um, let's talk about trying to change you. So mm-hmm. your, your toxic friends, uh, there, I believe there's a difference here. Um, cause when we think about changing others, uh, my brain immediately goes to your significant other, your wife, your husband, your partner, mm-hmm. whoever your significant other is. Uh, they're constantly trying to change the person that you are to better suit them and better suit the relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, this isn't always the case, but I feel like what I'm trying to say here is I feel like it gets more of a, um, it gets more of a reputation in this, in this relationship. Um, But it certainly can happen in your cliques, your friendships, your groups of friends, um the person that wants to change you to better suit them this all falls into into gaslighting again um yeah. our our episode on gaslighting is mm-hmm. trying to change the perspective of others to better suit themselves and, yeah. and change you physically not physically but emotionally and what you feel and, and the way you think like if you're not if your thoughts aren't in line with theirs then they either throw a tantrum or you know try and constantly berate you until you change your mind and your views and your opinion to coincide with theirs have you seen this Gemma? oh yeah um i've had it a few times personally as well where i've had people try and change me to fit their agenda and like if i've say wanted to do something and it's not been something that perhaps that person wants um it's that it does come really strongly with the gaslighting like they can make you feel like you've got a choice and they give you a choice but then like if you choose the option that they don't want then you're gonna know about that and they will like belittle you and keep going on at you about it until you end up cracking and changing the changing what you want to fit with them and their agenda and it can happen it can start really subtly um i've had it where i'm um, like say i've been going out and they could comment oh you're not wearing that are you i'm yeah. very much a um like a kind of hoodies and jeans kind of girl like i'm not one dog i just haven't got the energy these days to be fair and i remember going out with a friend at the time and they'd be like you know we you can't go out like that because i their, their intention was to um meet people and you know it just it didn't fit in the way i was didn't fit in with what they wanted and then they started like name calling and just like belittling me and stuff and i'm like you know uh it's it can start subtle with little little nit like little niggly comments and then go all out for the whole you know um yeah, yeah. and it's draining Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's draining uh, when it's when it's something that happens regularly uh, from the same people. It oh, yeah. can be very it can be very draining. Uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. So the whole point of this episode um, is to just keep your eye on your friendships. Keep mm-hmm. an eye on things. You don't have to. We never want you to take any of this information and start analyzing each friendship uh, or anything any topic that we decide to talk about 
we just want to present some information uh you know as we've lived through some of this and we've learned about it in my own uh journey through rehab and Gemma's uh own journey on her side we've we've come through a lot of this stuff and we've actually taken the time to research and learn more about these things before we come on and present this information and the reason that we do this is because people do like talking about this stuff and it needs to be a more normal thing um it shouldn't be considered something that is taboo um mm -hmm. but the ultimate goal here especially for for an episode like this is to not necessarily break down and start breaking up with your friends and and everything it's just to be aware of what could possibly be draining your mental health and be draining your emotional uh existence and be draining your physical appearance etc um because of all that um we're we're in no way telling you to go out there and start finding new friends <laughs> you know yeah. um, friends are a very important part of our lives uh it, it's nice to have friends it's nice to be a friend to someone especially yeah. a confidant um yeah. somebody that that can somebody that you can share some intimate details with and mm -hmm. still uh you know not send them running for the hills if you will uh, yeah these are very important people in our lives and you know the friends that uh, are deserving of your time and energy and you know the friends that are just draining you it's completely up to you whether or not you want to break off friendships that drain you or not uh, i have a hard time myself doing that because i always look for the best in people and i don't want to be that guy that just shuts everybody out that uh completely drains my energy karma everything uh into the negative now if it's over the top i'm sorry i don't have time for that i have my own sober journey to stay focused on mm -hmm. and i do not have time for the constant negativity yeah, um, yeah. so in very rare cases i will i have put an end to friendships that have been nothing but a negative effect on my life mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, if it's just every so often, or, or you, it's, I have a hard time yeah. uh, saying goodbye. Uh, or people that think they can dictate to you what you should and shouldn't be doing and who you should and shouldn't be friends with. Sure. Yes. Yeah. I just I just had a situation like that arise. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no reason at all that you you should feel as friends. Like you should have enough control over that person that you yeah. can dictate what they can do and what they can't do. Um, and no amount of like, no matter what hold they think they have over you, nobody but nobody has the right to tell you what you can and can't do with your life or who you can and can't be friends with. And if they're going to do that, and then if they're going to, like, try and control every aspect of your life, then, like, the, there is only one option I see with the end of that, and that is to just walk away and let them get on with it. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we mm -hmm. wrapped it up pretty nicely there. Um, we're coming up on the air. I did want to discuss one thing. Um mm -hmm. If you want to, if you could throw that bio link back in the chat one mm -hmm. last time, um, please, uh, to everybody watching live right now and to everybody that watches the replay, uh, if you make it this far, I hope, um, please, if you want to get in contact with Gemma or I, mm -hmm. every week we tell you to hit us up anytime you want to. And uh, we put our bio link on there. It has all of our socials, all of our DMs. Uh, mm -hmm. You can you can get in contact with us very easily anytime you want. If you need to talk to us, or if you have show request, or if you want to be on the show, or yeah, it's all in the bio. No. Um, there are certain forums uh, that should not be used to discuss mental health hour stuff. 
uh, especially right in the middle of a public forum in particular. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Please try, and uh, that's why we set this mm -hmm. um, uh, bio link up is so that you can, there's multiple avenues to reach us um, and uh, just keep that in mind um, for the future, please. Um, and that being said, a quick, let's do a quick update on mm -hmm. Doe's Walk for Mind. I'm looking at it now. We have 426 pounds. How many raised. miles have you done, Doe? And Doe, yeah. yes, if you're in the comments, please update us on the mileage. That's 85% of Doe's goal. So we're almost there. Uh, that's awesome. Great work. Uh, as always, 76 miles down. Oh, my word. Just, uh, awesome. So That's Doe right. is out there crushing it. And, uh, yeah. Also, I want to say a special thanks to uh, one of our active sponsors here, Ella, um, mm -hmm. and my buddy Valentine. I'm going to drop that in the comments. My buddy Valentine dot com and if you visit her website and use the code firedude15 or any of the other 30 that she has out there on hats right now um there is always uh some good everybody wants one of the bunnies you know with the lights uh, but there's a lot of other stuff on her website that is very awesome uh, and it all goes to help Bunny Rescues and Ella's Cause, which we are very big uh, supporters of here at the Mental Health Hour. Um, but yes, let her know that you are from the HAPS team, or you're not the HAPS team, but you're from the HAPS family. And yeah, there's always a little extra something in your stocking uh, when you order from my Bunny Valentine. Use one of our codes here. Mm -hmm. um, and let's not oh, let's also not forget tonight is Catalyst Wednesday. Please visit our good friend Jim in Chicago Land at is uh, I don't know if we're doing fire pits anymore, Jim or not, but uh, I know you said soon it's going to be back to the candles, which is just as good, just as fun, just as uh, just as good conversation. Um, if you haven't been to Catalyst, please stop by tonight at eleven p.m. Eastern Time, ten p.m. Central. Uh, sitting around it's pouring outside oh no so it sounds like a candle for a cat tonight um but they're just as good and just as fun and uh the conversation on catalyst is next to none um just some great mm -hmm. overall conversation for the middle of the week blues um getting over that hump day uh come stop by and talk with everybody i'll be there tonight and look forward to it every wednesday on the haps platform Gemma do you have anything to close out the show with uh, any, um, any last thoughts on toxic friendships or things to promote uh, um I do have I did have something I wanted to say it was regards to reaching out like like you said make sure the place is appropriate but um just something that I wanted to address with something that's like being arising if you have to question whether it is appropriate enough to send to somebody maybe you need to think longer and harder about it before you do i am happy to help anybody with anything but as i said like please make sure it's also respectful and appropriate i am not trained in like mental health i'm only sharing my personal experience as is tim so like I'm happy to help anyone anytime, but like, I also have um, a life in which I have to live as well. And I will always get back to somebody, but um, yeah, like just recently, like, as I say, 40, 50 messages in one night is a bit excessive, but Absolutely. yeah, like um, that's all I just wanted to say. Like I will help anybody anytime 
but 40 50 messages in one night is excessive so just bear with me that's all i'm saying but as i said as well if you have to question in your mind whether you think that that is appropriate to send somebody then maybe it isn't like that's all i'm gonna say and like we're both happy to help anyone but yes absolutely we are not medically trained and we have to stress that out loud i am looking at I've actually made um, inquiries about doing something to get some kind of training, professional training. Um, However, neither of us are, and we're just sharing our personal experiences. And sometimes that's enough, you know. Yeah, I personally found that it's been helpful reaching out to people that have been there, done that sort of thing, more so than a medic. This is... this. um, This show is to be viewed more as a group therapy type of uh, uh, tool rather than us being uh, medical professionals to come listen to. Uh, We've lived through a lot of this, as have a lot of you in the comments section. And it's just, we're here to generate conversation, you know. And like Gemma said, I'm I'm also happy to uh, take any messages. Let's let's just be honest. Gemma's the Gemma's the one you want to talk to. <laughs> oh, and I'm making like um because people a lot of people are using Discord, so we're making um a, a Discord channel for the mental health hour where yep, so like you growing. can chat with chat with each other as well. Um, like we've t- we've often talked about support groups and things, so we want to try and make a, a safe place there as well, so that people yeah. can talk among themselves, and we'll be in there as well. So it's not like within the crowd of everybody else that's on like the HAPS platform and stuff and it's specifically for like just mental health and then to reach out to other people that might have the same thing so if you're interested in joining that I'm gonna put it on the bio link but like until I do if you're interested in joining then just hit me up and I'll add you to it but yeah right on so like yeah I just wanted to address that with the um like the boundary stuff and things yeah. because it's been a bit intense lately so to say the least absolutely but we mm-hmm. also we also appreciate you taking the time to reach back to the folks that do reach out to us um, yeah. I've, I've gotten a few messages myself nowhere near 40 or 50 but uh, I always I always get right back to you guys if you need to reach out uh, the bio link we'll we'll drop it one more time why not and uh on our way out the door here uh if, if mm-hmm. you do need it if you do need to talk to Gemma or I, please do not hesitate anytime mm-hmm. we're always here and that's why we do this show and we'll see you guys next week for another great episode uh and thanks for tuning in tonight thank you for all the awards thanks for the great conversation as always and hopefully we see you all later tonight at catalyst all right thank Except you guys okay that should bye be for soon. now just because it's on here. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Bye for now. Bye.